What's up everybody, it's Bren. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are all doing good out there. If you're not doing good, that's okay. Uh, me, myself, I haven't been doing the best lately. Uh, I'm actually just recovering from a uh, sinus infection. I got a nasty blister on my nose here. Um, and it was a very busy week, which is a good thing for me. It was a very busy week for me last week and uh, I made good money, stuff like that. But here I am, I'm back again with another video. And I, in today's video, I wanted to talk about minimalism for a little bit because I made a post, like a community post um, a couple of days ago and I was pretty much sharing a, a photograph of my clothing, my t-shirts, my underwear. And you know, those of you who have watched a few of my videos, you saw maybe one of my laundry videos, you'll know that I don't have much clothing. I have pretty much what I need. You know, 10 t-shirts, 10 pairs of underwear, 10 pairs of socks. I've got two pairs of pants, two pairs of hoodies, sorry, two, two hoodies. And um, I, don't just, I, I just don't have a whole lot, right? And I don't want it to be confused, right? I, I don't want to send a message that that's what minimalism must look like because it's not, you know what I mean? Um, minimalism can mean something very unique to you, right? So if I'm defining minimalism, right, I am saying that it is removing anything from your life, any person from your life, any thought from your life that doesn't serve a purpose. Uh, removing something that doesn't make you feel good, right? M removing something that's causing you stress, right? And it doesn't have to be removing a whole bunch of things either. It could be literally removing one thing from your life, right? If there's one thing in your life, one thing, person, or thought in your life that is causing you stress and you are getting rid of it, you're practicing minimalism, all right? Minimalism doesn't necessarily have to be a physical thing, right? Um, but in terms of the physical aspect of minimalism, moving into my vehicle, I had to minimalize my belongings, right? And, and it began in the closet, right? And this is something I started years ago, actually. I started practicing minimalism years ago. Um, but it never got to this point, obviously, because I, I, you know, live in a car right now. But I would start in the closet, right? And I would look at all my clothing and I would say to myself, all right, if I have like, if I have like 10 pairs of pants, I'm going to bring it down to, you know, two or three, right? And if I have like 30 t-shirts, right? I'm going to bring it down to 10. Things like that, you know, uh, just getting rid of the bulk, and not only that, but I put them in a pile and I get them ready for donation, right? I much prefer donating what I'm getting rid of as opposed to just dumping it, right? But some things I did dump as well, you know what I mean? Some some like, some things that I just didn't need and I figured nobody else would need, you know? Uh, like dirtier shoes, shoes that are just beat up, clothes that are torn. Um, you know, certain plates and bowls and, and things like that, uh, I would get rid of those bulky things. And then also like dig into my closet and pull out like a bunch of wires that I wasn't using, like wires that don't even have a place to plug into. You know what I mean? Um, I would get rid of those things. A lot of stationary items. If there was like pens, like a whole bunch of pens and a whole bunch of paper clips and all this stuff like that, I would put a lot of that into a trash bag and just dump it and I would keep only a couple that that I would need and use because you, you don't if you have if you have 20 pens in your drawer right now I guarantee you you're probably only using one pen right now I mean maybe two right but like you're definitely not using all 20 all right so you just get rid of those things right this is physical minimalism right now so it started in the closet, right? And then you come down to items that you might care for a little more, like shoes, for example. I had a thing with shoes, right? So particularly, you know, every, uh, most birthdays I had in my 20s, right? My mom would uh, gift me a pair of Jordans because I took a liking to Jordans in my younger years, right? And my mom caught 
note of that, right? And then she started, um, she started gifting me Jordans, you know, on all, all of my birthdays. Probably, it, it stopped probably around, um, you know, when I was about 26 or so, it stopped because I, 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 I sent her um, a message saying, you know, I, I love these Jordans, but I don't really wear them anymore. I, I don't wear Jordans anymore. Because I at that point, I had about six pair of Jordans, right? I had about six pairs of Jordans. And um, most of them were really clean, man, because like I, I rarely, I rarely wore them. I stopped wearing Jordans after a while, but she kept gifting me them. So I kept storing them in my closet, right? And, you know, I didn't have the heart to get rid of them or to donate them even, uh, to donate them even, right? Because I thought that it was uh, ungrateful of me. It was almost like mean of me to, to, uh, get rid of a gift that my mom got me, like I'd be hurting her feelings. And later I realized, you know, I don't wear these Jordans. I appreciate the, the gift that my mom has gotten me over the years. All the gifts gave her lots of hugs, lots of thanks. Uh, I wore them a couple of times, but now I don't wear them. And I had to come to terms with, as long as I appreciate it, the gift, and then it becomes mine, it's now my choice whether I want to hold on to it or not right and if it's taken up clutter in my room or in my mind i have the right to get rid of those and it's nothing personal against the person who gifted me do you, do you know what i mean so what i decided to do was i sold two pair and then i um pretty much gave the other uh, pairs of jordans to a friend of mine at the time who had the same size foot as me and he was thrilled you know so i gave them away and and then I felt so much better after I got rid of them because at the time I, I wasn't, I was kind of rotating the same two pairs of shoes, you know? And um, I just felt so much better waking up in the morning and, and just knowing exactly what, what was gonna go onto my feet and not really have to look at what else could go on my feet. Do, do you know what I mean? And this might be OCD as well, you know what I mean? I, I think there might be a slight bit of OCD involved in, in my minimalism journey, but that's okay, you know what I mean? Because I'm, I'm still decluttering, right? Um, so there's other items too that people will, will call into question. Like, what about like picture frames, um, books? What about gifts and cards that, that people, that family member sent you? That Things that you look at today and they, they um, provoke joy, right? Inside of you. They, they spark joy, I should say, because there's a book that I'm going to recommend once again. It's called The, the uh, Magic Art of Tidying Up by Marie Kondo. This was an incredible book for me to read. A very important and um, insightful part of my minimalist journey. Uh, teaching me how to let go of things I don't need and only keep things that spark joy, right? So let's talk about the items that spark joy. Okay, so let's say I have a card that my son made me for my birthday. That's, you know, it's also a very small item, you know what I mean? But watch out for them small items because they do add up. These things I'm gonna keep, right? So I have a shoe box, right? And, and uh, this shoe box is not in this car. I'm gonna tell you also where I store leftover belongings that I decided to keep, like certain kitchen appliances, like for, ex uh, for example, my action figure collection, which I'll talk about in a minute as well, and certain photographs and, and items like that. I'll tell you where I store that in just a minute. But hold on to those things. Hold on to those things. Put them in a shoebox, put them somewhere safe, and keep them around, right? If it, if it brings joy to you, keep them around. Um, and what else? You know, I also have, you know, picture frames that, that I have held on to that I will be putting up in my apartment when, when I do decide to go back. You know, not many, not many. I, I don't have many picture frames. I don't need many pictures. Just a couple around the house. Um, to look at and love and stuff. And the items that I hold on to the most and the largest collection of any item that I I own is my Ninja Turtle action figure collection. I have a lot of loose figures and carded figures, um, you know, figures that belong to me, figures that belong to my son. And I have these stored away neatly in boxes, right? I just boxed them all up because I like to display all my action figures. And these, these figures really bring joy into my life. So I decided to hold on to those, right? 
And I can, I can honestly say that most of my belongings stored away elsewhere are action figures. <laughs> and I'm gonna share with you all uh, my collection one of these days, that's the, but that's down the road. But the point I'm trying to make is, you know, you can hold on to things. You can still collect things and be a minimalist. But to remove something from your life that's no longer serving it any good purpose in your life, um, that is the practice of minimalism, all right? So that's a lot of physical talk about minimalism. Let's talk about minimalism as it applies to the mind, right? So this is, this is my take on minimalism in the mind. You know, for many, many years, I would hold on to bad things that have happened to me in the past. I have a bad habit of holding on to bad things that were said to me in the past. And for years, I would carry them. And these thoughts and words would dictate how I feel about myself. I would hold on to these thoughts and words and opinions for years. Years, man. And I had to learn through therapy um, that, you know, other people's opinion of me is none of my business. And it really has no place in my mind, right? It has no place in my mind. You know, what they say about me should not affect how I feel about myself, right? I'm gonna do what I wanna do. And as long as I'm enjoying my life and taking care of my responsibilities, and that's all that, that should matter to me. I don't have space for other people's opinions in my mind. So I had to declutter my mind. And this is also a form of minimalism. Um, so it's not just about the physical, it's about the mental as well. Damn, that's hot. Uh, Cumberland Farms, great coffee for a great price, but, but damn, watch out. All right, real quick, I wanna go back to the, um, what did you do with your leftover items after you decluttered all your clothes and uh, personal belongings and you know, just miscellaneous items. What did you do with the likes of your furniture, your your couch, maybe your your flat screen TV? Um, you know, my my son had had furniture like a little gaming desk, a gaming chair. The list goes on. You know, um, my my beloved neutral bullet. You know, you know, kitchen appliances that I want to keep. What if I have a toaster that I want to hold on to? Right. Um. And here's what I had to I had to come to terms with, all right? So in my situation, I was moving into my vehicle. And I knew that the larger items, like my bed, for example, they're going to have to be sold, all right? I'm going to have to sell these for cash. And then I'm going to have to move into my... And, and just bring that with me. You know what I mean? It's, it's not about, oh, I'm going to um, store the bed so that I don't have to buy it again later. I, I didn't have that mentality. I literally just wanted to get rid of the bed, take whatever cash I could get, and, and I just knew that I would be in a much better place after I, you know, uh, finish my, my nomad journey and pay off my debt. I, I knew that I would be in such a better place. It would be no problem for me to go back out, get another bed, get another, you know, set of nightstands at Ikea or something like that, right? So I sold my bed. I sold my mattress and frame, okay? I think I sold it for about $600 cash, okay? Which wasn't bad. You know, it was a loss because I bought the mattress for like, you know, for like a thousand bucks and then the frame was another, you know, uh, 150 bucks. So yeah, sure, there's there's some loss involved in that, but you know, it's for the greater cause, right? It's, it's, it's for the greater good. Sold it on Facebook Marketplace. Posted it up, sold it the same day. Same with my couch. Um, I got rid of my couch. Uh, I couldn't sell it, but I did hire someone to come and take it away. I had to actually pay to get rid of a certain furniture. Uh, not a crazy amount, but you know, you, you look online, you find a place, they come, they, they get it out of your life so that you can move on with your goal. You know, either sell it or dump it, right? If it's a large uh, furniture item, right? For my son's stuff, 
I got rid of the gaming desk. It was so small. Um, I, I got rid of that, but I got him a new gaming desk for his, for his new house. Well, not his new house because he's he lives in his mom's house. So, you know, he had he brought his gaming chair from my place over to his place, and he took what he needed from my place and brought it over to his mom's. So he was all set there, and that's like larger items. Um, the next items that I had to sell and get rid of, like my Xbox, for example. I sold my Xbox uh, with about three games for like a hundred bucks, okay? I sold it, I sold it on Facebook Marketplace. Um, and those other items that were left over, like for example, you have plates now, you gotta go into the kitchen, you've got a whole bunch of cleaning products. I dumped a lot of that stuff. I took a big black bag and I just started shoveling stuff in i kept certain i kept a bucket and i put everything that i knew i was going to use on a daily basis as opposed to cleaning in a bucket you know what i mean i just minimalized everything i just i i look at everything scan it and i say i just don't need all of these options i don't need all of this stuff i don't use all of this stuff what am i going to use take it out put it in a corner and literally just dump the rest all right i went after it all right i went after it so Certain kitchen appliances, like again, my, my beloved Nutribullet, right? Something I use every day, my toaster, things like that, right? Or my George Foreman grill, something like that, right? I don't wanna go back and rebuy those things. So I get a big box, put them all in the box. Phone up my sister who lives in Boston. Boston's only an hour away from Providence. Called her up, said, sis, do you mind if I store my belongings in your basement? I promise I won't take up too much space and I'll make sure it's neat and tidy. My sister says, no problem. No problem. Big shout out to my sister. All right. So I stored my belongings in my sister's basement and it didn't take up too much space. And every time I go down and see my sister, I can go through the stuff and just make sure everything's in good shape. Um, and, you know, it's been it's been long overdue. I need to take my sister out for some lunch and some dinner. Um, and we're going to do that. I want to show my appreciation, you know. She's got a busy schedule. I've got a busy schedule. But the time will come when I get to show my appreciation for her storing, for her allowing me to store my leftover belongings in her basement. You know, it's important to show that appreciation. So um, I definitely look forward to that. But um, I'm tight with my sister anyways. So, uh, you know, it, it was really no no strain on her to, to help out with that. But that was a huge um, relief for me to to get those leftover belongings stored. Like, you know, the picture frames, uh, the, the action figure collection, my big winter jacket that I don't need in this car. You know, certain hats that that, that, that I wanted to keep. Um, you know, uh, you know, just just all of those things that, that, that um, made me feel good about my life. You know what I mean? I kept on, I kept those things. And all the other things that did not spark joy, shout out Marie Kondo. Okay, I have to shout her out because that, that term is, is coined by her, sparking joy. Um, all those things that didn't spark joy, I either donated, sold, or dumped straight up. That's how you, that's how you get it. That's how you get the physical minimalist part of it down. All right. And going back to the mental part of it, if you want to uh, declutter your mind, you just have to really look inward maybe speak to a therapist, maybe um, read some books, maybe just uh, go for a long walk and, and have a talk with yourself as opposed, you know, you know, have a long walk and talk with yourself about, you know, what thoughts are actually valid that you hold on to in your, in, in your mind. And if they are not valid, and if they do not, if they do not sync with what you know to be true, get rid of them. Okay. If they hurt you, get rid of them. If they cause you stress, get rid of them. So anyways, that's going to do it for today's discussion on minimalism. You know, um, I'm not pushing minimalism onto anybody. I'm just explaining my process through physical and mental minimalism. All right. So that's going to do it for today's video, guys. It's been very busy. Uh, it's going to be another very, very busy week. Um, so I'm glad to squeeze one in. Uh, also keep in mind, I try to upload YouTube shorts on a daily basis. So, so try to enjoy those as well. Until next time, take care of yourselves.